It's good to have you in our Sunday School lesson for the 18th of September 2022. Our topic is End Time Prophetic Panorama. What a topic! But before we go into it, let's pray. Father, we bless your name because you are so good. We thank you because there's none like you. Today, Lord, we come before you and pray. Lord, that by the grace of our God, your word will go out with power. Lord, that every heart, every soul, Lord, that listens, that watches, will be blessed. In the name of Jesus, circumcise our hearts, circumcise our ears, circumcise our minds, that your word will have free course in our lives. I receive grace. I receive anointing. I receive apostleship, Jehovah God, that today I will carry out this assignment according to the dictates of heaven. Thank you, Father, for answering, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. We, are, we have been looking at the book of Daniel for the last month or so. Today, we're going to conclude our lessons in Daniel. And we're going to yet look at another prophecy, another vision that Daniel had as we begin to read from Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10 from verse 1. In the third year of the reign of King Cyrus of Persia, Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, had another vision. He understood that the vision concerned events certain to happen in the future, times of war and great hardship. When this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. All that time I had eaten no rich food, no meat or wine crossed my lips. I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. On April 23rd, as I was standing on the bank of the great Tigris River, I looked up and saw a man dressed in linen clothing with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem, his face flashed like lightning, and his eyes flamed like torches. His arms and feet shone like polished bronze, and his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. Only I, Daniel, saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing, but they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. So I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. My strength left me, my face grew deadly pale, and I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak, and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground. Just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling, to my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God, so listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up, still trembling. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer, but for 21 days, the spirit of prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels came to help me and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. Okay, thank you very much. Now, before we look at the prophecies, I want us to look at something that is very, very important. And that is the person of the prophet. Why did Daniel qualify for all these great visions? Why did Daniel qualify for interpreting the visions and the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar, of, of Darius, of the kings, several kings? Why? As the reading was going on, it reminded me that the angel said to Daniel, you are greatly loved by God. You are valued. You are beloved of God. Well, the angel could have said, Joseph, I'm your, 
you are beloved of God. The angel could have said, Carlo, you are greatly, greatly favored, beloved of God. Why? Because once you have become a Christian, once you have given your heart to Jesus, God loves you so much. In fact, God loves you before you're born again, before you give your heart to him. God regards us as righteous, every one of us, because we wear the righteousness of Christ. Once we surrender to Jesus, God no longer looks at us in that respect as Okoro Ephion and so on and so forth. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don't condemn yourself. Are you a sinner? Yes. If you have given your heart to Jesus, you are no longer a sinner. You have been forgiven. You are now righteous before God. You are now a saint of God. Haven't said that. But that was not why Daniel qualified to carry all these visions. No, that is not why. Otherwise, every one of us will qualify for this kind of great revelations. But we, we don't. Not all of us do. Therefore, let us look at Daniel chapter 1. Daniel 1 verses 5 to 8. Daniel 1 5 to 8. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Amen. That's the number one qualification. Is, going, is God going to use you? Will God reveal the secrets of the kingdom of God to you? Will God confide in you? The first qualification is, it's not being born again. When you're born again, like I said before, you're righteous, you're clean before God. But you need to get to that point where you make up your mind that you will not defile yourself. Daniel and the other said, we're not going to eat this food. Why? Because we are told this food contains the kind of food that Jews were not allowed to eat because they were not clean, they were unclean. Number two, of course, in an idolatrous nation, the food were dedicated, of course, to the idols before they were saved. Just like you and I will pray and say, God, thank you for this food. And then we eat. And Daniel knew those things and he said, I will not defile myself. I want to continue to be clean before God. My brother, if you have given bribes to get a contract, you have defiled yourself. If you live in sin, any kind of sin, you have defiled yourself. If you do things that other people do, to get money you have defied yourself if you compromise your body by having sex with somebody who is not your husband or wife you have defied yourself do you want God to confide in you do you want God to reveal secrets to you do you want God to use you in any meaningful and reasonable way it is not by speaking in tongues it is not by prayer and fasting. Those things are needed. They are necessary. But as long as you are not keeping yourself clean, uh -uh, there is an extent to which God will come close to you. 
when your son or daughter has pulled and messed themselves up with urine and fizz, that's not the time to bring them close and whisper things, secret things to them. No. Daniel and the others decided they were not going to defy themselves. It doesn't matter. Money. Are you in politics? And others are grabbing. And you grab. You have defied yourself. And God will not trust you enough to begin to give you this kind of secret visions. Praise the Lord. Let us also look at Daniel, the same Daniel chapter 3. Daniel 3, 1 and 2. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps. Okay, prefects, that's fine. Go to verse 11. And that whatsoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing fire. Go to verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you've set up. How trustworthy are you? Persecutions have come again. And persecution is one of the hallmarks of the end times. A lot of people have been killed around Nigeria and Cameroon and some other countries. A lot of saints of God have died in various parts of the country because of their faith. How willing are you? How willing am I? To stand faithful to God till the end. Daniel did it. And God knew that he could trust them. They, they, they were young men. They were young men, very young. Yet, yet, they said to the king, the Bible calls him the king of kings, Nebuchadnezzar. Small letter L. They could look him in the face and say, Look, we are not we are not we don't even think of what to say it is simple we are not worshiping your god we are not worshiping your image we worship only the most high god we know that that god can defend us against your might and against your fire but if he doesn't if he chooses not to it is better for us to die and go to him. My brother, my sister, before God can begin to entrust a lot of things in your hands and in my hands, we have to get to that place where we are ready to die for this gospel. Jesus died for it. Stephen died for it. A lot of the other saints died for it. And make no mistakes about it. Children, women, Pregnant women, people have watched their families slaughtered in various parts of the country. Yet, when it came to them, I said, you either denounce Jesus, renounce Jesus, or we kill you like, say, well, kill me. I am ready. Man, the problem that a lot of Christians have is that we are too afraid. We say it is better. Paul said, I am caught between two. I don't even know which one to choose. To depart and be with the Lord. We read those things, but we don't take them seriously. My brother, let us begin to seek God. It doesn't happen automatically. Let us begin to pray and say, God, prepare me. Prepare me. Strengthen me so that in the face of death, I will not deny you. It's not as easy as I say it, but that is what we need to do. If we are to stand for God in these last days, praise the Lord. Let us also look at Daniel 6, verse 5 and verse 10. Daniel 6, verse 5 and verse 10. Finally, these men said, We will never find any basis of charges against this man Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. Verse 10. 
Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Amen. Daniel was a man of prayer. Where did he get all the strength to resist evil? He prayed. The Bible says he prayed officially three times a day. Therefore, when they said, if you pray, we'll kill you. Then they said, well, <laughs> he was not ready to go asking help, not even from the king. Daniel prayed and he continued to pray. And as a result, when he knew that the decree had been signed, and the law of media and Pesha was such that you couldn't change it. Not even the king himself could. That was why he couldn't deliver Daniel. He took God. We have cited a few examples. The three Hebrew children were in the fire and the Lord joined them there. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions and they couldn't do anything against him. There are other people who were thrown like that and they died. We have to be willing. We have to be ready. And Jesus, the all-knowing son of the father said, Don't be afraid of anybody that kills the flesh only and cannot kill any, any other thing. He said, be afraid of that one that after killing the flesh can throw the soul into eternal damnation, into eternal fire. Christians, it is time to wake up. It is time to wake up to the realities of the times and begin to see God and begin to prepare. So much so that should we miss persecution, meet persecution, should things become difficult, more difficult than it is, we will still be ready to represent our God. Praise the Lord. Now, therefore, let us go further. Daniel did not stop with those ones. Daniel was a man who loved his people. He was a man who loved his people. Let us look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verses 7 and 8. Jeremiah 29, 7 to 8. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners... It's okay, Evangeline. God had allowed the children of Israel and Judah to be carried away, captives to Babylon. And Jeremiah sent a message. He said, hey, this is what God has said. Don't be deceived. You're going to be there for 70 years. And he says, number one, love that place. I mean, why would you love a place? You are a slave there. You have been taken captive. But said, pray for the peace of that place. Because when there is peace there, you will have peace. And that is what Daniel was doing and we're going to see the series of visions that God gave Daniel were about Israel Daniel loved his nation Daniel loved his village Daniel loved his country my brother make no mistakes about it if you are somebody that is not interested in what happens in your village, in your town, in Lagos where you live, in Abuja where you live, and you're only interested in your church. Sorry you missed it. There are things that God will not tell you. God will not use you, no. My village was at war with another village. And my wife and I decided, because we live we live there, and because <laughs> my business closed, Almost. People were afraid to come from the other village, even from my own village. And we decided to pray. 
Every midnight we wake up and pray for at least an hour. After two weeks, God came down in the kind of vision I've never seen before. And I've, I haven't seen it again since, unfortunately. And God said, Joe, this is why your people are fighting with the other people. And I said, God, what do we need to do? He said, this is what you do. Do this, do that, do that. And there will be no one. Nobody will die. If you don't pray for your place, if you don't pray for your people, God will pass you by in a lot of things. Things will happen. Your people will be destroyed. And you say they are unbelievers. They are going to hell. If you don't watch over that city, if you don't watch over that village, and there is war, your church will close. It's as simple as that. Your church only exists there because the village exists there. If there is no village, if there are no people, if everybody dies of hunger, your church goes because your members will not be exempt. Make no mistakes about it. Daniel loved his country and God was able to reveal things about that nation to him. Praise the Lord. Let's go quickly. Let's also look at Daniel chapter 9. Daniel 9, 1 to 4. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last seventy years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commands. Okay, let's stop there for now. God, Daniel loved his country. Daniel also loved God's people. There's no doubt about it. If you're a child of God, you must love your nation, love your country, love your town, love your village. But you must also love God's people. And I've, I've said your people because I'm talking about people from your village or your town or your country. And the second one I'm talking about God's people, the house of God. There's, you, there's no, if you don't do that, God will not reveal things about his kingdom to you. The visions will not come. Things will continue to go bad. Praise the Lord. As It is as simple as that. God will love you. God will show things to you when you show interest in his people. Otherwise, things. But look at Daniel. For 21 days, Daniel was fasting and praying for the church of God for his nation and that is why these visions were coming and Daniel he went beyond what he was asking for he went beyond what he was praying for God began to give him visions that all of us are interpreting that we know that is helping the whole world the whole Christian world even till today Daniel loved God's people Daniel loved his nation and that is why Daniel qualified to be used by God in this way. Praise the Lord. Where does all this end? Why these visions in the first place? Are we, why are we studying these ancient visions even up until now? I'll tell you why. Number one, they show that last week we talked about the, the Babylonian uh, kingdom, the Medo-Persian kingdom, the Greek kingdom, and then the Roman kingdom that reigned until that ruled until the day, the time of Christ. What does that show? And these are visions that were given hundreds of years before they began to happen. God is the owner. God is the author of history. God is in charge of historical events. God is the owner 
of the earth and the fullness thereof. Whatever is happening today has already been seen and been foretold for our benefit by God so that we will know that this our God reigns in the affairs of men and gives the kingdom of the earth to whomsoever he wills. That is why it doesn't matter what is happening in Nigeria. Children of God will rejoice and look up and know that it hasn't taken God by surprise. Yes. I said the other day that, and people will ask, if God was there and he loves us so much, why does he allow these things to happen? And I ask you, God so loves you that he gave you a knife, a kitchen knife. Without that knife, you'll be able to peel your yams. You'll be able to cut your, your vegetables. You are an adult. It is then left for you to use that knife for what it is meant for or to use it to cut your wife and stab your children. We are responsible for the things that God has given us. God has given us so much wealth in Nigeria and yet people are living in poverty. Why? How do we blame God? People are killing each other. We don't blame God. We blame ourselves because we are accountable. We are accountable adults. Praise the Lord. Therefore, these prophecies point to the fact that God is in charge. Are you a child of God? Your father is in charge. Your Jesus is on the throne. Pressing the buttons that control the universe. Praise the Lord. He is able to perform everything that he says he will do. And finally, they point to the fact that history is still unfolding. From the time of Daniel, if we continue, if we continue the prophecies of Daniel and the visions of Daniel and the other prophets will know that the end time is coming. Those prophecies end up that Jesus is coming again. And therefore, if the prophecies of Daniel were fulfilled, if prophecies of Jeremiah were fulfilled, if the prophecies of Moses and of David and of the rest of them were fulfilled to the point that Jesus came Jesus came the first time they had waited for him thousands of years and suddenly he came hey the prophecies of the New Testament of concerning the end times are also true and Jesus will come again and the Antichrist will come and the rapture will take place everything that the Bible says will happen there will happen the Bible says the Holy Spirit will come and will speak in tongues and many of us do. It says we'll prophesy and many of us do. It says we'll be healed and many of us are healed and heal other people. Everything that is written there will come to pass just as Daniel's uh, visions have come to pass. Are you ready to meet your God? That is the end point. We have studied Daniel. We have seen the prophecies. We have seen the visions. And how they came to fulfillment. Are you ready? Let us pray. You are born again. That's fine. Begin to pray for yourself and say, God, actually, if you could do these things over the centuries, over the millennia, then your word is true and every word will come to pass. If you're not born again, raise your right hand and say, Dear Lord Jesus. I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Cancel it from the book of death. Lead me until eternity and until I meet you face to face. Thank you for answering my prayer. Dear Lord, we bring ourselves before you. We have been studying the visions of old and we know that the end point is the fulfillment of the visions for the future we pray jehovah god that you help us we pray that you prepare us like daniel lord that will be ready to stand for you that we will love your house that we will love all the people that you have given into our hands thank you for helping us is anybody sick among us jehovah god we pray that you touch such 
and heal them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering us today because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.